Great relationships don't just happen, they're designed. But how do you get the love you really want when you haven't had the models and examples you needed? We've learned the hard way that talking about stuff can change everything, but it doesn't come naturally, and that's normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the ups and downs of creating a custom-built love. We'll get personal and talk about what's worked for us, hear from Jolie about what the research can teach us about love, and answer listener questions. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. We're going to talk about something I find really interesting about relationships because it's something I don't hear talked about very often, but it comes up with my clients all the time, and it comes up on this podcast all the time. And what's that? Origin stories. Origin stories. Every relationship is going to have its origin story. Okay. Um, But also, things that happen, decisions that are made in relationships have their origin stories too. Like the decision to shift from monogamy to consensual non-monogamy. Okay. Um, Or the decision to, um, also the decision to have children. Uh, The decision to move across the country. Uh, The decision to sleep in separate beds. Mm -hmm. The decision to, the all big decisions, especially ones that put you um, potentially out of alignment with what we think of as the general cultural story or dare I say the word normal, like <laughs> normal is a setting yeah. on the dryer. It, it it bears nothing to this conversation really, but there's a, a set of accepted norms. And more importantly, there's a set of accepted imagined norms, like what we imagine <laughs> yeah, people we will expect of us. Of, yeah. And then when we do stuff, when we make decisions that take us out of that uh, or out of alignment with that, um, how we create the narrative of what what that decision is like who made that decision who was um who was the main actor who instigated it the way we tell that story um it well we repeat it origin stories get repeated over and over again um and they can get used as weapons they can get used as um ways to actually help us through new things oh yeah okay so right. should I jump can... right to an example to make this easier to understand? Yeah, do that. I think that would be helpful. I'm starting to get the picture, though. Okay. I know I sprung this topic on you, but it comes up a lot, and I want to write about it because what I find is the origin story can be something used for growth or something used as a weapon. Yeah, I can see that because if, if blame is part of the story... Then it can well, be weaponized. This was your idea, so these are all your problems. Okay, so let's use us as an example. Um, the origin story of us deciding to live in this house that we live in right now. Okay, yeah. Specifically. So this isn't just about, like, how did we meet? Though that is certainly one. Like, the the how did you meet? How did you get together? Yep. Um, especially if your story wasn't just a simple, like, well, we bumped into each other or we swiped right Um, if it's at all complicated, that narrative can certainly become part of how you present yourself to the world and to each other. Sure. Okay. Origin stories are about where we place responsibility. Sure. Origin stories are one of the ways that we craft a narrative about who's responsible for the outcomes in Mm. our relationship. So for you and I, we live in this house. Now this house that we live in, I bought back um, in 1997 when I was which is like a bajillion years ago 25 I cannot believe that's true but there it is I bought it when I was very very young I was like that's three a... years old no. um, <laughs> <laughs> I got married and the house next door to my parents um, home went up for sale and my mom was like hey the house is for sale next door and somehow that like here we go we wound so up buying drove it drove home from it's, kindergarten yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopped on my Hot Wheels, made my way home. Okay, so I, we, we somehow managed to buy this house um, through the help of our parents and also through the stupidity of not knowing what the hell we were doing because um, we absolutely could not afford it yet. Um, but we bought it, and 
the story of how you and I came to own it yep. later was a really important part of how we talk about where our relationship went. So later, uh, I was getting a divorce and we had to figure out what that meant. Like, what, where's the house going to go? And you, you had to decide. You didn't like the house you were living in. Um, your partner didn't like the house you were living in that much. You both wanted more land. I had more land. So the decision was made and already see how I'm, I'm yes. telling a story. Yep. I'm crafting a story. story. It started with what the two of you were deciding. Yep. Um, but I had a role in that and I didn't want to not have this, this home anymore, even though it had tons of problems, including, you know, being next door to my parents, which isn't necessarily, like, <laughs> has bag. pluses and minuses, mm -hmm. but you know, I'd given birth to my babies in this house. I home birthed them. Um, it, it mattered to me. Um, but crafting the narrative around yeah, whose see. decision it was mm -hmm. and who pressed go and who did what became a, a big bone of contention that could be brought up in the arguments that the three of us had as we were going through harder yeah. parts that came up a couple years later in our relationship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fast forward a couple years, we did wind up buying this house all together, sort of, except it wound up being you and I who bought the house and she didn't sign on to the house. Right. And without getting into the assignment, it doesn't even matter anymore because that's over. But the story... It doesn't matter anymore, but the story but the can story, still contain the elements of blame or responsibility or coercion. Or, or feeling or powerless. Feeling powerless. Right. Yeah. So depending on who's telling the story, in what context, and for what purpose, for what desired outcome, each of us could paint ourselves as blameless or up to our eyeballs in blame yep. or as a victim or as persecuted and harmed or as a rescuer. Like, oh, sweet. Yeah, I mean, you could absolutely <laughs> paint yourself as the rescuer totally sweeping in. And, mm -hmm. and that origin story becomes really part of so many other stories then. How do we make decisions about money now? How do we make decisions about who gets to be in what room of the house? How do we make decisions about who owns the house? And Whose that, name is on the deed? How do we make decisions about what happens if we aren't together anymore? Who would get the house? And those stories and how they're told, how those yes. stories are told, informs those kinds of decisions later on. That's yes. what you're saying? Oh, sure. And it informs the yeah. arguments that get had. What arguments? And especially arguments. what I find yeah. is the passive aggressive arguments. <gasps> The arguments oh. that aren't arguments. Like, no, 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 we're not arguing. This oh, is just a discussion. Yeah. Let me explain to you how we got here. And that explanation carries with it. Okay, so we were just talking about a house. Just the decision about just, the house. Yeah, yeah. How about the decision about whether to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> how about the decision about being non-monogamous? Yeah. About having a complicated family? How about the decisions that we made about combining our families? Yes. Um, about homeschooling, about not homeschooling, right. about who made these who decisions, made these who decisions. was empowered and who wasn't. I see this yeah. every day. Okay. Attached to every decision, there are, at the very least, there's you've got your drama triangle. Um, goodness, I can't remember the theorist's name. Uh, Cartman. Cartman's drama triangle. You've got the, the victim, the persecutor, and the rescuer. These roles, okay, right? Whoever's telling the story can jump around into whichever position they happen to want to occupy. Uh -huh. We are so capable. Humans are storytellers. We are capable of rewriting stories on the fly. We're capable of telling true stories from multiple perspectives all at the same time. Yes. It's like why true we make stories. True they don't, stories. We don't have to make them up. We don't have to change them. Because we just have to pick a just the a way of a lens at to look it. at yeah. them, leaving some facts out, putting some facts in, highlighting um, certain, highlighting certain things, yeah. um, adding certain pieces that maybe actually didn't get learned until later, but we go back and retroactively sort of add them to the story because yeah. we know we know the outcome, so we can sort of assign meaning and motivation yes. in the moment. And right. maybe it's true, but is it true? And we mm -hmm. don't really know. And <sighs> Okay. Okay. So I this, see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. This is why this is such a juicy, juicy topic to me. Because you're saying, yeah. When you have an origin story we um, that, that serves a certain purpose, if your purpose changes, um, you might look and notice that you change how you tell that story. Oh, man. 
Yeah. When um, when you and I first uh, decided to get married, uh, we had been both on the not married, like not getting married we, train. We, we were, were very like anti marriage, yep. as if marriage rather than us was to blame for yeah. our disastrous first attempts. Right. Um, which is sort of funny because while an institution like that, a, a, a paradigm can be problematic, we were still. We were the ones the taking action in yeah. our stories. Yep. Um, but how we chose how we chose to tell that story has changed over the year, over the years, mm -hmm. not just this year, all the years. <laughs> yeah. And yet, there's a groove. There's a deep worn groove where some of the details and some of the facts we have agreed to, and they become sort of this. Um, they become what we we create a shared story that has the same sort of facts in it. And we repeat it a lot. And the thing that we repeat a lot becomes the story. But in fact, it may leave out whole perspectives. It may, the, the, the repeated story yeah. becomes this sort of crafted narrative. Um, I could draw an example from, you know, just a movie, like take uh, a story like, oh, something simple, like A Christmas Carol, Dickens, A Christmas Carol. There are some really key features, right? And they're repeated. There are so many renditions of the story of A Christmas Carol, right? It, so many renditions. And most of them grab some key lines out of Dickens' novel, and they, and they ground to that. But details can be different. And those details can shift how you feel about the characters, yes. whether the characters right. feel like they are responsible for their actions or whether stuff feels like it just happened to them, whether you feel sad for them, whether you pity them, whether you feel like they were victimized, whether you feel like they were empowered and made choices, whether you feel like they were likable or not. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Same That's, story. Same story. All I mean, the same Muppets narrative version, elements. Um, but. Albert, yeah, Finney, Albert Finney version, you know, you just got the, you, uh, all yeah, you these take all these different ones. versions and Bill Murray. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Very different. Right? Very different. Now, bottom line, in all of those, we get a Scrooge who is a miser who withholds not only money, but love and care yeah. for others, right? We do this all the time in our stories about how re relationships that didn't work out the way we wanted, even relationships were in that didn't work out the way we wanted. We will paint someone else as the the, the violator or the oppressor or the um, the harmer in our story if we don't if we if we just want to be able to be in that victim spot. And I don't mean to say that there aren't real abuses and real oppressors. There are, um, you know, like there is objective wrong, but we can also create take fairly neutral, nuanced, mm -hmm. complex other people and make them into the one-sided figures that we need them to be the one -sided in our figures. stories. Yeah, right. Um, and that happens a lot when we have a, like a romance that ends. But it can also happen in a romance that continues. Mm -hmm. So I see it in, in clients who come to me and they're transitioning from monogamy to consensual non-monogamy and They'll, what they have is a story about who started this. And who... depending on how it's going, that story has a different meaning. Yeah. So in nice. our life, who started this, Ken? I mean, when I put it that way, it's pretty funny, that right? That is funny. All right. Who started this? So are we currently <clears throat> having a good time in our relationship? Yes. From my perspective, I, we are too. I'd say I yes. Mean, if you'd said no, I would have said, okay, cool. Guess we'll have a follow-up episode. <laughs> follow-up episode. <laughs> but... Um, we'll give you a fight episode one of these days. One of these days. I've had a couple people request a fight episode. We'll mm -hmm. just have to hit record sometime. We do fight. Oh, yes. We are, yeah. So, um, yes, I think I, I, I'm having a good We're doing well. It's really easy to go back and tell our origin story and paint a picture of two flawed but likable characters. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know what I was but, not all the time? Likable. <laughs> oh, Lord, me either. Right. So when I watch people retelling their origin story, specifically around this, um, one of the things that they're missing is the gift that taking responsibility will give them. When I 
when I decide to own the fact that I chose to end my first marriage, mm -hmm. that I chose to pursue you, that I chose to live in this house versus another house, regardless of your actions, that those were my choices. When mm -hmm. I take responsibility, I feel not only empowered, but I feel a certain um, ability to look at how complicated those decisions really were and how I was influenced by a lot of factors. But when I push the responsibility onto you and I say something like, well, you were unwilling to le leave your spouse. I've yep. I've never you put could. it that way because that didn't really... It's not really, well, no, I think I have. Yeah, okay, let's go there. You were unwilling. I left my spouse. You yep. didn't. Uh -huh. Now, I don't really think I wanted you to, but I'm but guessing there were times when I did. Like if I if I could really put myself back there, yeah. there must have been times when that's what I wished you would do. Yeah. And it it really it would leave me in a spot of being disempowered to say, well, you you made it this way. It's it was your unwillingness. Oh. Like right yeah, rather the, than, hey, I chose to enter a trial. Uh -huh. I ch I chose that. If I put that on you and said, well, you started this. You wanted us to be non-monogamous because you wanted, like, you you wanted yeah. to have your cake and eat it too. That's the common line I hear. Yeah. Um, I forget my own in volition. The, in, the, in, in CNM, I've heard it as Kate and Edith. Oh, no. It was in a movie a long time ago. I want my Kate and Edith too. Oh, no. Anyway. That's a terrible pun. Now it's out on the internet. Oh, no. It wasn't mine. It was in a movie. Okay. When I have done that, um, I wind up feeling really helpless. Like the world's mm -hmm. happening to me. Oh. So I have had trouble taking responsibility. I, I, I don't take responsibility for as much as I should by my own judgment. And that has been much worse in the rest of my life. And it is now. And the feeling of helplessness that goes along with it is intense yeah so yeah not taking responsibility passing off responsibility i agree completely leaves a feeling of helplessness helplessness and helplessness um you know many of us were were you know were like well trained to assume a helpless position mm -hmm. in our childhood i i was not i was trained to believe i was responsible for literally everything, everything. that ever happened mm -hmm. um so I still carry that around. So I often will over-assume responsibility. And yet that helplessness, it can be a, a common thread I see in non-monogamy where when we get bumped and bruised, especially during the early days when we're trying to figure out what is our agreement going to yep. be? And then, hey, what's it going to actually feel like when you go out? Yeah. Like for real. Okay, the rubber's meeting the road now or the rubber's beating something else. Sorry, that, that one was coming. just right there. I saw there. it coming. There was nothing I could do about it. <laughs> um, why is this the pun episode? What's up with that? Sorry, everyone. Um, when that happens, we might have feelings. They might be really uncomfortable. They might be really uncomfortable. And so what do we do? Um, one thing to do is displace my own responsibility and say well and we go back in the past and we start dredging up how mm -hmm. you got us here yep. and how a decision that you made is what got us here and what i find is that people will repeat their origin story they'll they'll tell it again and again um in a way that tends to place one partner in a, in a one down position and one in a one up position that's mm -hmm. using the language from terry reel's um relationship work um, one down, one up. Grandiosity and on the one hand and despair and right. um, yeah. shame. Shame on the other hand. Grandiosity versus shame. And it gets repeated so often that it starts to feel true. And then we start to talk about the truth of the situation. And this is where I definitely do need to take responsibility. The truth of the situation is always going to be complex and multifaceted and could always be told from a billion different positions right like we see that happening with marvel movies right now they're making these like different yeah. takes yep. on the superheroes or we see it the 
Arthurian legends have been retold, like from the yes, point, the, right, from the perspective of versus, Morgana, from the uh, from yep. the witch, right? And you take and you change the perspective. Maleficent is a good example. Yep, right. Shift the perspective, not Sleeping Beauty, but from Maleficent's perspective. All of a sudden, everything shifts yep. for you. And while there's still darkness and challenge and and love and happiness and all of these things, most of the time humans are trying to flatten stuff out we want to explain right. and, it and the root of explain in latin is is to flatten to flatten to lay out to lay flat to and, and now you have one side and that's what yeah, you said a minute side. ago about a one-sided um a person right you, you now that the this person shows up in this story is one-sided right they're not they have lots yeah. and of, it's not just a, a coin so how i describe people most often is that we're all like um, multifaceted geodes and there's the f you know a geode that's been cracked open and there's so many facets and they're intricately connected and the depth and how you look inside the jewel is different mm -hmm. depending on which direction you look in it and there's all the unconscious stuff you've got that that rocky side that you don't even really know what's back there you can't <laughs> really view it right and we are all that we are yes. all multifaceted, but when we tell our origin stories, it is so tempting to flatten out the situation mm -hmm. and explain it as though there is a truth. And I am a huge, uh, hugely problematic person for doing this in the past, trying to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. And I have really come along to the idea of constructivism and the idea that there are multiple truths at any one, you know, like well, always, you... while also understanding that there are objective facts, it's just that they're, they're different from truth and they can also always be learned. Like we can always learn stuff that then shifts what the facts are. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so complicated. It is complicated. Especially and when we're you talking have about feelings. come along, oh my goodness, yeah. You, you've developed a lot of skill at at allowing something to be multidimensional, allowing stories, events, experiences to be multidimensional, where, yeah, it's, it's not and just... It hasn't been easy. I was doing that because it's what helped me feel safe. Right. I That is why I wanted there to be an objective truth I could cling to. Um, and I wanted... I have a great memory, which is nice, but, you know, there also is like no such thing as like there it's still the stories you tell it's yourself still only from my perspective yeah. and i'm still reconstructing it every time every you know time. like that's how your brain works yep. you're reconstructing the story and so what i find is when people uh, add an element of responsibility that borders on blame to their narrative around who started this mm -hmm. who made this decision it leaves you like it's like having a uh, one of those emergency pull cords in on the bus like you know like oh yes. okay so i could at any point pull this cord and you have to take responsibility for wherever we are because when i pulled on this wow. emergency thread mm -hmm. it says you did this you are responsible mm -hmm. and now i'm going to jump into that victim position yeah. you become the persecutor and Often I'm going to look for the hero. Who's the hero of the story? I might also find myself to be the hero as well. I might jump back and forth between yeah. the two. Yeah. Or I might see that there's no hero and I'm just looking for one. I'm, I'm just hoping that someone will appear. Which now changes the way you look at the world. Yeah. So something that I recommend folks think about when, they, when they're when um, they considering their origin story is... Um, talking about it from multiple perspectives all the time like and mm, not just, just well, you tell it. your side and i'll tell my side because that is that two sides of a coin mm -hmm. i want the multifaceted, multi-dimensional yeah. like what if so i can use my imagination for this we have imaginations they're incredibly powerful let's use them yeah i can imagine what it might have looked like a great perspective for me has been to use um, my my mother. Like, what might she have seen? Like, my mother's gone That's, now. She's yeah. been gone for um, 11 years. And I, so now I can sort of see, just imagine. I'm, I'm just trying to imagine what she might have seen of our origin. And I don't know very much. But I can sort of 
get myself a little outside. I can also write a story. I can write a story and imagine I was you. What might I have been feeling? It's just a way of practicing not assuming that my perspective is the only one and is therefore the correct Uh one. Even though my truth is my truth and how I feel about it is how I feel about it. Feelings are by nature transient. Mm -hmm. They will change. We've talked about this many times. Transient, they're context dependent. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about. You tell the exact same story in two slightly different ways and you get a completely different set of feelings from them. And so now people come at this from different directions and I have seen um, some people really struggle with this for a different reason not because they struggle to to see multiple perspectives but because they struggle seeing all of these perspectives Um, their Myers-Briggs code like if you were going to do a Myers-Briggs MBTI indicator they're likely to have a P in the last position Mm -hmm. like um, I'm an ENTJ Um, they're likely to have a P you are a P Um, That last, that fourth position is judging versus perceiving. Judgers discern really quickly. We tend to make decisions and we're like, there, there, with clarity, this, this is what I see. Perceivers often see so many possibilities and they can feel all equally true. Um, I once was having a conversation with our our middleist son there and he... (laughs) Um, I asked him what color the sky was because I was having trouble getting the truth out of him. He had stolen something. And I was just really struggling with him because he was not... I mean, he was holding the thing he'd stolen, telling me he hadn't stolen it. It it was a kind of funny situation from out here. But I was trying to get him to understand what truth was. And I said, what color is the sky, Quinn? <laughs> and, he, and he said, well pink and gray and blue and i'm like oh dang he is so right but this is not yep. helpful he was able to see so many so many possibilities yep. and that is a huge skill he's got a gift that way that he can see so much potential and he returned to the thing he stole and it was all fine <laughs> um little kids do stuff Yep. And that was one of my favorite memories of him. It still is. It's one of my favorite memories of him because it's. it was the first time that I saw why he and I didn't understand each other. He was like six or seven years yeah, old. Yeah, he was young. He was young and he saw nuance in the sky. He didn't say the sky is blue. He thought about he what thought he knew about, about the sky. He thought about all the different and... sets. We were inside at the time, by the way. He was not describing it. He was, he was really that open to possibility. I was like, whoa, okay. We think completely differently. At that point, I actually de-escalated the conversation because I was like, "I, wow, we're just not going to be able to communicate about this. And I, I passed off the, the discipline about yep. the, the thing that had happened to you because I was like, I, this, this doesn't make sense to me anymore. And I'm going to wind up being the villain here because I don't understand him at a fundamental level. This really took me, this was one of my first dives into what's the psychology that's going on here? Mm-hmm. What's happening that... Uh, he and I can't get on the same page and was a big part of how I came to understand how people work (laughs) because I really believed that he was being honest in that moment but I thought oh oh we're so different that's how I want to see you we're so different we're so different Mm -hmm. your perspective may be completely valid and it might also be irrelevant to the question at hand in a, a conversation about, say, um, who got us started down this non-monogamy road. What is the more relevant detail? Is it that you wanted to stay married and have me as a girlfriend? Or is it that I was so bought into the idea that anything was possible that I just jumped and I was like, yes, I am all in for that. What is the, is the, or is the relevant detail that, that, we never really talked about it. We didn't really get a clear... We didn't have the words. We didn't have the language. Yeah. So we didn't really say. We just kept talking about intimate friendships. Yeah. Is that so, the relevant detail? And which one of us was doing that? Or was neither of us? And we were just confused. Literally just confused for like a while, years, trying to figure out what are we even talking about? Mm-hmm. So all of these things are... <clears throat> well, what is the relevant detail was your question. And... It depends both on what you're talking about and because we're humans, what your what our goals are. 
Yeah. Yeah. And if I have a particular, like, rhetoric or debate, like, well, I want to prove this, so I'm going to pick that detail. There you go. Bias in the storytelling. Right. Hum- like, there are so many different kinds of psychological bias. I love that huge chart, um, like, of, of all these biases mm-hmm. that have been um, established through theoretical um, and experimental psychology. Um, I love that chart because it's huge. It's Look huge. it up. It's amazing. <laughs> we should find it and put it in the show notes for this episode. Like t-shirts. There are so many biases. Um, we can we can always look at a situation from a particular angle. So what I like to do is say, let's tell this origin story in a lot of different ways and understand that our habit is going to be to choose the way that suits our purposes in the moment, that suits my suits our purpose, my, yes. um, my desire in the moment. So if I'm feeling one down, if I'm feeling like you are um, overstepping a line, mm-hmm. I'm likely to bring up a detail that reinforces that point. And if you are feeling like I am stalwart and unmovable, you're likely to bring up a detail that reinforces that. And when it comes to the origin story about consensual non-monogamy in particular, the story you tell can, like, it can redefine what you're doing, like your whole relationship. And now there are other people involved, yeah. right? And this is where I think it gets really, really tricky. Once you start having multiple partners, these people matter. These people matter. They're They're humans. They're not disposable. And so... Picking and choosing a, a story that might allow you to encourage a partner to just discard another human right. without yeah. any, you know, reconciliation or thought or or anything. They're is, not just stories. They can change. They can change the trajectory of the trajectory everything. Trajectory of everything. They can also change your day to day, whether you think you're happy or not. Well, that's because if what... you keep telling yourself a story that you have been taking advantage of, but you also tell me that this is the decision that you want to be making, yep. Then you're choosing your suffering. Yes. Because you can change your mind. We can change our mind. We can also dis. We can always disengage from other relationships. You know, we can do it with grace and transition time, but. Um, I can also decide to sit in the mud yeah, and just stew in it. And that is a choice, but it is a painful one. I've, I've been there myself. Um, the summer of 2012 comes to mind yep. when I, I could, I practically lost my words altogether. I could barely yeah. talk yep. because I was so um, mired in a set of stories that I told that left me in a victimized position right. in a sense that I was victimized and I was choosing my suffering then. What I mean is like my life was going to happen one way or another, yeah. but I was choosing to see no meaning in it and to focus entirely on how I'd been taken advantage of and yep. the hopelessness of the situation. And that all turned on a dime on September 9th of that year with one phrase, one conversation. And all of a sudden there was meaning again. All of a again. sudden there was meaning. And the story could be talked about differently. So the origin story of your relationship is a powerful thing. Powerful. Yeah. I encourage you to spend some time reflecting on how you tell the stories of who's responsible for what's going on in your relationship. And how it went down. And how it started. How it started. Okay. Well, big Big conversations Big conversation. to be had here. Happy to hear um, questions, deeper questions on this. Um, you can always find me on my website, joliehamilton.com. You can find the contact form there. And um, until later. Keep talking to each other. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode. I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you, and that. You're just going to need to hop over to the website, listen to Jolie.com. There you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Go get those guides. They're great. They're easy to implement conversations that will help you take action in creating the love you really want. It's my mission to make absolutely everything talk aboutable. She managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my, my lovers, my friends, my family, and you um, on a podcast. Out loud. Relationship work really can change everything. 
That really is a wonder. One of my favorite things in the whole world. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way that you'd hoped in your relationships, I want you to remember that relationships can be messy and that's good news.